What's up everybody, Jeff here, and we are getting very close to Gen Con. It's only coming up in a couple of weeks, and that means that there's a chance that we might start hearing some rumors or some rumblings about new Malifaux stuff that might be coming up in the future. Typically, we at least get like a peek at the cover art or a name for the new book around this time of year, and obviously I'm super excited to see what they have coming up. But with that in mind, I thought it might be fun to talk a little bit about some of the things that might happen with the game in the future. I've done a couple of videos talking about things like Dead Man's Hand and what they might do with that, but one of the more interesting things that folks like to talk about is what they might do with a new faction in the future. There's a couple of different ideas that I often hear people throwing around as far as what a ninth faction might look like. And frankly, I think that a lot of those ideas are kind of unlikely to happen, but let me go over those really quick and then I'll tell you what my idea is for the ninth. So a very popular one that I often hear people talking about is a Burning Man related faction. Now, light spoilers for, I guess not so light spoilers for Ashes of Malifaux, so mute really quick if you haven't read the story yet, but it's been months now, so you should have read that story by now. But the Burning Man is kind of in decline at this point, so I think it's very unlikely that we'd get a whole new faction for those eight masters that were influenced by the Burning Man. Even though his power is still going to be around to an extent, I think that's very unlikely to be like a main plot point going forward in the future, so I don't think we're going to see a separate faction for the Burning Man. And frankly, I didn't think that it was very likely even when we were at the height of that story because there wasn't really anything uniting those eight characters to each other except for the fact that they were being influenced by the Burning Man. But even that, they were being influenced in different ways and it didn't really seem like a good reason to bring them together in a faction. It was convenient because it was eight masters, but I think that the way that they did it where they all got some new abilities in their title versions that kind of related to the Burning Man in different ways... I think that was a little bit more of an elegant way to handle kind of showing that they're all tied into the Burning Man, but they didn't necessarily need a whole new faction in the game. Plus, it would be kind of awkward to add a new faction to the game and just have every single master in that faction be dual faction, something that already exists. I think one of the cool and exciting things about adding a faction to the game is bringing in new masters that we've never heard of before or characters that we've heard of but haven't been in the game. So just saying, hey, there's a ninth faction and it's nothing new, I think that'd be a little anticlimactic. Now, on a similar note, another thing that a lot of folks like to talk about as far as the ninth faction is a tyrant faction. Now, again, this is kind of convenient because at the moment, there are eight masters that are heavily influenced by one or more tyrants. So in theory, we could see a faction that consists of Shenlong, Rasputina, Damien, Seamus, the Dreamer, Pandora, Hamlin, and Tara. But honestly, I think this is maybe even less likely to be a thing that they would want to do for the game. So in addition to all of the existing problems that I mentioned about, you know, having a brand new faction that's all existing characters and there's nothing kind of new to bring to that faction, I think it's even less likely that we would see the tyrants become a faction because, first of all, only really two tyrants actually exist as their own entities in that list, which is Nightmare and Plague as Hamlin. The rest of them are their own characters that are sort of influenced by a tyrant. And while that tyrant is able to sort of impose its will in some ways, it's kind of about this struggle between the tyrant and the host. And they're not actually the tyrant, with, again, with the exception of Plague and Nightmare. But on top of that, even if they were directly being controlled by the respective tyrants, there's no real reason why the tyrants would be cooperating with each other. Not only do they kind of work against each other in the sense that they're all trying to be the one that ascends and kind of becomes a god and takes over in a sort of all-powerful way, but we've also seen in the past that they're willing to work directly against each other. There was a couple of different examples of tyrants that cooperated back in the ancient past to actually imprison the other tyrants. Now, obviously, a faction doesn't have to be perfectly united. I don't think there's an example in Malifaux of a faction that is all sort of 100% cooperative and... and everybody works together and gets along. But it really doesn't make any sense for the tyrants to all be in a faction because they kind of all hate each other. And there's not really anything that unites them aside from the fact that they're all called tyrants. I don't think it would really work as a cohesive faction. And the other thing too is that we also see characters kind of gaining and losing influence from the tyrants through the story. And it would be a kind of weird way to flip-flop masters in and out of different factions by saying, well, you know, Sonya used to be influenced by Shirufe, but now she's not, and the Vix used to have the sword with Shazul in it, but now they don't. Not that that couldn't work, obviously, characters move in and out of factions occasionally, but that tends to be a big thing that happens at the beginning of a new edition and not something that would be able to happen in the middle of a story, and then suddenly halfway through fourth edition, we lose a master from that faction. 
Or at least they don't make sense in that faction anymore. I don't know. I think it would be messy, and I don't think it really makes much sense other than the fact that there's eight of them now, which is convenient. Maybe we throw Titania in there because technically Shezul is sitting on her throne, and that makes the ninth master, or maybe they do one new one. Now, another possibility that I have talked about in the past is to split the Arcanist and the MNSU, and I did a couple of videos on that a few months ago, so definitely go check those out because it's a really interesting topic. That was actually something that Weird was planning to do originally before they rolled out the Explorer Society, and I think there's some interesting artifacts of that planning that are still uh, visible in the game and the narrative at this point. So check out those videos. I actually had Doug from Steam Pirate Scoundrels come on and talk about that as well, and he had some interesting thoughts on the subject. But I think at this point we're a little bit past that. They've sort of moved beyond the point where it would make sense for the faction to split in two. And they've sort of undone some of the things with the newer stories that would have made it make sense for them to split. So at this point I think that's that ship kind of has sailed. I don't think we're going to see that happen again. But that gets me to my idea for what they might do for a ninth faction. And that would be to split the Neverborn. So when Malifaux first came out, the Neverborn characters were all these sort of creepy monsters that were in the background. And they weren't really much of characters in and of themselves, but they were more just these kind of dangerous things in the background that were sort of driving the story in different directions and pushing other people to do certain things or trying to influence the main characters and stop them from bringing the tyrants back. And over the course of the game's life, we have seen some of those characters turn into sort of more of their own characters where they have their own motivations and they're doing different things. And we've obviously seen a lot more characters get added to the faction because originally there was three and now there's nine. But the interesting thing about the Neverborn is that they're sort of split between two different groups. And I don't mean alliances, like the alliances within the Neverborn change and and it's a little bit of a mess right now where there's sort of three different alliances happening, kind of, and some of them, who knows what they're up to. But what I mean is that you have the Black Bloods or the sort of modern Neverborn, which is your folks like Nakima and Pandora, who are all descendant of the true Nephilim. And then you have this other group, which is the more ancient Nephilim, which includes the Fae and some of their followers and, and friends from back in the day. And I think it would be interesting if they split them off and made them their own separate unique faction. Part of that is just because I think it makes sense in terms of who they are and where they come from. But part of it is also because I think there's a handful of characters in the game right now that are in different factions and they don't really feel like they fit in those factions very well. So in particular, I'm thinking of characters like Nexus and Tiri. Nexus is an explorer society because Janus found Nexus and sort of saved it from its hiding place and now it's sort of working for her but it is this ancient entity that titania invented created and it's not really clear to me why it would continue to work for janice and not do anything else plus we get a little teaser at the end of ashes of malifaux that titania is aware that nexus is back out doing its thing and i think this would be a good way to make nexus either dual faction or just move it over to this new fey or ancient neverborn faction because it definitely makes a lot more sense thematically on that side of things and then Tyri is even more extreme. I think it, it was a little bit of a surprise to me that they brought Tyri in as explorers and outcasts because, I mean, obviously outcast is sort of the miscellaneous faction and there doesn't really need to be a reason why something's in outcast other than that they're kind of out doing their own thing. And at least as far as the narrative goes, it, it sort of makes sense why Tyri is working with the Explorer Society. I think they've done a pretty good job of developing that relationship and it's been a big focus of the last couple of books. But they're certainly like the odd crew out. Tiri is a fae, all the, all the Awa are fae, and they're part of these two very human-centric factions, and it just feels a little bit weird to me. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think if they did split it off and make a fae or ancient Neverborn faction, Tiri would be much more at home in that faction. It would make a little bit more sense. I think sharing models between some of those crews would make a little bit more sense, and they would all kind of go together a little bit better. So what I'm thinking is, for sure, in this new faction, you would have to have Titania, Euripides, and Tyri, because they are all Fey, and they are all from this time, long before the true Nephilim and, and the Black Bloods that we are now familiar with even existed. Now, maybe Weird puts those three in the faction as dual faction masters, or splits them off and makes them their own thing and separates them from their existing factions, and then adds masters that are brand new that we've never heard of before, and there's definitely some interesting things that they could do and pull from some of the deeper lore to develop that out a little bit more. Or if they wanted to, I think there's a couple of more choices from the existing game that would be interesting to move over to this separate faction. So the first one that comes to mind is Jedza. Now, Jedza is an interesting case because we don't really know much about her origins or where she actually comes from. 
but maybe even more significantly, it doesn't seem like Jedza really wants to be doing her thing with the Explorer Society anymore. We saw her sort of reject Janice in the last book and kind of tell her that she isn't interested in working with the Explorers anymore. So I think it would make a lot of sense for her to go off and be part of another different faction that's all the sort of old timers that are off doing whatever it is that they're doing. Another interesting one might be Castor. Now, Castor is obviously a... He was originally a true Nephilim, and now he's part of the Black Bloods in, in a sense. He's at least related to all the rest of them. But he's been around for a lot longer than most of the other characters that we're familiar with. Now, it's not really clear to me if he's going to have any sort of loyalty or allegiance with any of these other characters that we're talking about, but because he's been around for that much longer, I think maybe it could make sense to have him in this other faction, but... Personally, I actually think he's probably better off just sticking in Neverborn. It makes a little bit more sense to me. Now, some other interesting ones to think about are the Dreamer and Hamlin, specifically because they are, in fact, tyrants. Or at least Lord Chompy Bits is a tyrant. And we know that the tyrants were originally Fae, who sort of gained all this power and then sort of turned on their own people and, and sort of went power-hungry and, and did all sorts of bad things. So again, I don't think they would necessarily be aligned with any of these other people that we're talking about. Certainly not Titania. Titania does not like the Tyrants. But I just wanted to sort of shout them out because technically Lord Chompy Bits and Plague are Fae, so they would thematically work in this new faction, but it doesn't really seem like a, a good place for them to me. Plus then you have this weird thing where all the other Tyrants are Fae, and even though they're not the actual Tyrant, they're sort of influencing their host, and do they end up in this fact? I don't think it really works that well. But the last one that I wanted to shout out would be Jacob Lynch because obviously the Hungering Darkness is someone who comes from the same time as the rest of the Fae. It seems like he probably is a Fae. We don't really know exactly what he is, but he's been around for a very long time. And the other interesting thing about that is that while Jacob Lynch is obviously the master, it seems like the Hungering Darkness is sort of ready to step in and take over as the master. Obviously, we see in the title version where... The Hungry Darkness is sort of the one that is taking power, and Lynch does not look like he's doing very well. So if they were to switch places, or if Jacob were to die, I think it would make a lot more sense for the Hungry Darkness to be part of this new Fae faction, because there's not really a good reason why the Hungry Darkness would be part of the Ten Thunders. Maybe they sort of make an alliance and work together to increase both of their respective powers, but it seems kind of like the Ten Thunders are not happy about what the Hungering Darkness has been getting up to, so I'm not sure if that makes a ton of sense in the long term. Now, frankly, what I'd really like to see, and again, going back to what I was saying before about how if they're going to do a new faction, it would make sense for them to have like, maybe two or three masters that we already know about be part of that faction and then develop that faction out so that there's fun and new, exciting stuff they can add to the game. What I'd like to see them do is just do maybe Titania, Euripides, Tiri, and then fill in the rest of the faction with brand new stuff that we're not familiar with, rather than taking all these existing masters and just putting them all in this new faction. And one of the ways that I think that they could do that is by expanding the game out and introducing us to more of the world of Malifaux. At this point, we already know that there is another entire continent in Malifaux, at least one other continent in Malifaux. And this is inhabited by a whole bunch of different types of creatures, but in particular, we have these sort of snake creatures that have had some contact with Earth in the past, particularly in Mesoamerica, and they have this sort of Aztec snake man kind of influence. They've shown up in a couple of Through the Breach adventures, and I think it would be really interesting to learn more about these creatures and all the other things that live on this continent and sort of what their relationship is with the rest of the beings in Malifaux. Are they related to the Fae? Is this a branch of the Fae that we don't know about? But that could definitely be a source of at least a couple of new crews to be added to this Fae faction or ancient Malifaux faction. In addition to that, we also have characters like Valona the Astronomer, who is somebody who's been around in the sort of background of the lore for a long time, but we don't really know much about her. And she might be an interesting character to sort of bring to the forefront, similar to how they've done with a few other characters, and turn her into her own master and give her a crew. Plus, we also have the Keepers, which are these strange other form of the Fae that we've never seen and we really know very, very little about. So maybe we get introduced to one or two of them, and that could be another additional crew to add to the game. Either way, I really like this idea because I think it's a good way to open up some of that older, sort of deeper lore in the game and sort of introduce us to more of the mysteries and the secrets and things that have been going on in Malifaux, because I think that's a really interesting part of the lore. And adding in a new faction like this would be a good way to sort of bring in a lot of that stuff and also keep it sort of tied in with what's actually going on right now in the current events and some of the power struggles that are going on both between the Neverborn as well as between the humans and the Neverborn. 
But let me know what you think about this. Do you like my idea of having the Fae sort of split off from the Neverborn and become their own separate faction? If you do, who do you think would be good candidates to put into that faction? And if you don't, then tell me what your idea is for a ninth faction, because obviously as the game grows and expands, they can add new masters to the existing factions, but I think one of the more likely things that we're going to see in the next handful of years is probably a, another faction added to the game altogether. Maybe that'll just be something totally brand new, like the Explorer Society, where it was just sort of mentioned a handful of times back in the day, and they sort of decided to develop that out into its own brand new thing. But I like this idea of a sort of fey faction and some of these older creatures who sort of don't really have a great fit in the existing faction structure to sort of develop out into their own new thing. Either way, it would be really exciting because having a new faction added to the game means we're going to get all sorts of new generic upgrades and potentially emissaries and effigies and versatile models and all sorts of cool stuff. It would be really cool, and I'd be super curious to see what they do to develop this new faction out and sort of give it its own identity. Like, what kind of play styles or what kind of abilities do you think would be common to this new Fae faction? Similar to the way that, like, armor is super common in the Arcanist and Heart to Wound is really common in the Resurrectionist. Let me know what you think about that and give me your own ideas in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel as well as share it around with some folks you think might find it cool. Check out all the important links in the description, including the merch store, the weird affiliate link, as well as a link to the Patreon where you can get all sorts of different benefits, including early access to videos, extra entries into giveaways, and all sorts of other cool stuff. And with that, I'd like to send a huge thank you to the Extremely Cool Kids tier on Patreon, the Steam Power Scoundrels, Dogmatize, Devin, and the Spill Paint Pot. And thanks for watching.